This week we'll be playing the final two games of the 2016 season. We're in the hunt for the playoffs. I've done something I've been meaning to do for a while, so the last few games have been kind of easy. And as I explained last week, the only game that really matters out of these last two is that one against the Falcons. If we lose against the Buccaneers, we can still win the division by beating the Falcons in week 17. So it doesn't really matter what we do this week. Of course it still does matter, but my point is what I've done is I've put sliders on. So I was playing on all Madden before, now it's starting to get a bit too easy. As you can see here, week 14 we beat the Buccaneers 24-10. Then we beat the Cardinals, to be fair the Cardinals with a backup quarterback, 25-10. So I've changed to sliders which should make it quite a lot more difficult or at least more realistic than it has been in the past few weeks. Although to be fair that could be down to you know the team. You finally start to get an idea of who does what well, you can start playing properly to their strengths rather than just playing towards a scheme's strength. But I figured I'll try this out against the Buccaneers. We played them two weeks ago so we'll have a good point of reference as well comparatively how easy it was. But that's enough talk, let's get into the penultimate game of the season. So it's not a great start for us, the Buccaneers move down the field pretty easily, and then here Doug Martin just finds a huge hole, nobody made a tackle, nobody even attempted a tackle really, he just walks into the end zone, but we come down here ourselves, throw one deep, that was actually Sudfeld, the tight end up against a corner, I thought he was going to beat him with size, he actually beats him with speed off the line, obviously a little bit more physical than the corner Werner, and then he just makes that play. Now here, that was probably a chance for an interception. I kind of overplayed it myself there. And we did absolutely nothing with our possession there. Just three and out straight away. We had some problems. Obviously, fourth and 12 wasn't a great one. We do cover the punt pretty well. It was a pretty decent punt for where we were, but that's about all you can say for that. And then Doug Martin burns us deep there. One missed tackle by one safety. Another safety misses that tackle again. And then finally, Kevin Pierre-Lewis, the linebacker from the opposite side of the field, comes over and makes the tackle. And then we do have a big play there. Third and goal, we stop him. That's Trey Flowers, tackle for a loss there. 30th tackle this season, solo that is. And we stop him, they get three points, 10 to seven. And obviously that was just a nice throw on and out to Coleman there, he makes a nice play. But we made the call here to go for it on fourth and one and Coleman didn't hold his block on the corner and that's why we didn't make it. Turn over the ball, probably was a bad decision. But Kevin Pierre-Lewis tries to do us a favor there, nice sack by him on Winston. Stops him third and 13 here. All the time in the world in the pocket, all the time in the world to find Crowder downfield. And then he's tackled there, but that's not good enough. On this screen, a big play by Ebner there. Just bursts through the available hole. Takes down the cornerback behind the line. The tackle doesn't manage to get a hold of Winston, but Rashawn Melvin there knocks down the ball. A nice turnover for us, but again, we did nothing. And then this is a huge play by Winston. Gets through everybody, goes downfield. There's hardly any time left on the clock, and they're in field goal range now. We almost were able to shut them out, but that flag actually took it back on a holding call. It was all right. And now this is the third quarter, so they didn't get any points. But then on their first possession in the third quarter, they do that to us. Crowder down the middle. They must have traded for him at some point. Now we're going out on fourth here. Fourth and four. We need these points. Five minutes left in the third quarter. We get them. And then the same guy, DJ Foster there, does a little celebration. But that's because that was his first rushing touchdown of the season. And by that same standard, it's the first touchdown of his career. So you can't blame him for celebrating. Winston meets the strong safety there on the outside. That's the last thing a quarterback wants to see. And then on third and two, we had the chance for the stop. We had a chance to force them to punt. They were on the 46. Instead, he goes all the way for the touchdown. And they were about to make it even worse until Kyler Fackrell forces the fumble. Trey Flowers gets on top of it. Turnover for us, but unfortunately, we never had good field position. And then this happens. A fumble. Luckily, I say luckily, it's kind of irrelevant. It goes out the back of the end zone, so it's only a safety. Not a defensive touchdown, but it doesn't really matter. We do find DJ Foster here for another touchdown. That's two for him on the day. One receiving, one rushing. But at this point, it's just a lost cause. We do actually have a chance here with 30 seconds left on the clock, but it was 4th and 20 after a holding call, and that ends the game. I think I like that a lot better, actually, that kind of difficulty. Obviously, it wasn't a good game. A lot of miscues, actually, so this could have gone a lot better. It wasn't like it was just suddenly more difficult. There were a lot of bad plays, a lot of missed tackles and things today. Not the worst showing by Christian Hangberg. Another tipped pass that went for an interception. He has no luck with those. Rushing Keith Marshall got absolutely nothing going on the day. The one quarterback sacked by Kevin Pierre-Lewis doesn't have a stat for missed tackles, but pretty much every player here would have quite a few of those. No more games except for this one. The only one that matters 
The Atlanta Falcons at 8 and 7 are currently first in the division, therefore take that playoff spot. But if we beat them, we will be 8 and 8, they will be 8 and 8, and we will have a better divisional record than them. That means that we will be going to the playoffs. I really like how changing the difficulty Obviously, it will take a little while for me to completely get used to it and get a little bit better again, but it's harder. That's what I like. It was beginning to become too easy. The test against the Buccaneers wasn't about can I still win, it was about does it still feel fair, and it does. So even if I lose, it's kind of irrelevant. We're not trying to set up to win every game possible. We just want it to be realistic and fair, and I feel like it is now. We do have multiple players returning from injury. Tajay Sharp will sit back at his number three spot. To be fair, I do feel like we started to miss him in recent weeks. I was going to say, I'm not sure whether it's exactly true, but I look down here, it massively is. I was going to say he is a better route runner than Michael Thomas. He's a better route runner than everybody here. I and mean, you just kind of feel that in that slot position where he runs a lot more different stuff than maybe the two outside guys. They just play a lot of outs and straight ups and flies. Tajay Sharp does a lot and with that 80 route running you really do start to feel the difference. So definitely at the number three spot. Definitely could be number two or one but I'd... Coleman and Mitchell do absolutely nothing wrong. They are very, very, very good. So we'll keep them there. As for the middle linebacker, I'm not too sure I want Scooby right here. That's no offense to him. It's not because he's played badly, but Joshua Perry, since coming in as the starter, has absolutely lit it up. Huge hits, big plays, forced fumbles, all sorts of stuff. Ah, heck, I'll play Joshua Perry. It's one more game. He's played well. He has the run of form, of course. Scooby Wright doesn't, and that's obviously literally a thing with confidence. So we'll stick with Joshua Perry in this game, and then we can have a look and maybe make a decision for next season. Keith Marshall is the only player and first player throughout this entire season to have his overall modified by confidence. Which is crazy, we're playing the entire season, no one was ever confident apparently, I guess uh, 7 and 8, you kind of expect that. And let's do it, let's try and get into the playoffs. Never thought this would happen, last week we kind of just fell apart. It is an away game at the Georgia Dome, so we hosted the Falcons last time when they put a beating on us. Maybe, just maybe, we can go in there and steal this win, steal the division, and go to the playoffs. Third and two to start the game. We had a chance to make them punt. Instead, it's a nice big play to Devontae Freeman on the flat there. Freeman caused us all sorts of problems last time, but that's a nice tackle there by Dion Jordan behind the line for a loss of two. Third and ten now. We've got a chance to turn it over again. Instead, well, that's not turning it over. I think we had a chance to even play the ball at some point there. We do manage to finally tackle him inside the seven, but Nate Ebner was injured on that play. But on third and goal there, we do stop Devontae Freeman, force them to go for a field goal, and then on first and ten, we don't stop Devontae Freeman, and they get the touchdown. It's a game of two sorts there. We make a good play, we make a terrible play, and it's that all day long. Hackenberg obviously threw it away there on purpose, but that marks his fifth incompletion of the day on five tries, so so far so we keep trying we've got to keep trying and that was a decent throw slightly underthrown there maybe Malcolm Mitchell didn't have to come meet it but on third and 11 we could have got a first down instead we're gonna go for it on fourth and two we're being brave but to be fair with a hole that size it's not really that brave that's a nine yard gain on fourth and two so we've got a chance on third and six and now this was slightly misthrown but it was also just a bad read on Warrillow's coverage so we turn the ball over no points in the first half whatsoever and we start with a decent run there we've got to start relying on the run if we're going to beat the Falcons here we're down 10 but at the end of the day it is only 10 and that was a good throw that's pinpoint accuracy there from Hackenberg finds Mitchell in between two defenders and this wasn't actually supposed to go to gathers it was really supposed to go to the guy underneath him but he completes it for a big gain so we're not going to complain and there's a slant to get the third and eight conversion to Coleman nice play and on the two yard line you're just going to give it to Marshall give him a chance to beat everyone with speed the only defender close to him was Warrelow behind him and he's not going to catch him nobody is and now it's 7-10 to 10 and we've got the ball again and a big play there from Marshall down the field. We're starting to run the ball well and then disaster strikes. That is Keith Marshall injured for the rest of the game. He's out. But on the very next play, well, the next play after a holding call, Tajay Sharp, first game back from injury. That's a linebacker on him. A linebacker on Tajay Sharp is never going to work. He beats him there on the out route and then just goes for the touchdown. Perfectly thrown, 14-10. to 10. So we're up now by four, and that should have been an interception by Kevin Pierre-Lewis. 
He knows it, we know it, but it doesn't matter. We get the ball back anyway, and then this is late in the fourth. Now, we just went for it, trying to drill it in there, but it doesn't matter because this field goal puts us up by seven, a full touchdown, and then Dion Jordan does this, the forced fumble sack. We need to get better at picking those balls up, but I'm happy if we just keep forcing fumbles, and then this was going to happen at some point, right? You don't know when it's going to happen, but you know it's going to happen. Julio Jones taking it all the way on a pitch and catch pretty much. 1,500 receiving yards on the season after that, but then this is a big play. 17 to 17. We go for it. We're risking it. We're hoping that they don't get into field goal range if we turn it over here with only 30 seconds left. We complete it to DJ Foster. That puts us into field goal range. And this is where we're going to go for it. And we're trying a 52 yarder here. The kicker has been iced. Connor Bath has missed a bunch of kicks this season, but he's made a bunch of clutch kicks as well. And add this one to the list. He puts us into the playoffs with his boot. A 52 yard field goal to finish the game. The kicker iced just gets it. What a game! down by 10 at the half 10 to nothing and we come back to win on a field goal Christian Hackenberg had about the worst day possible then a clutch completion to DJ Foster right there at the end so he ended up making up for it rushing Keith Marshall went for 108 before getting injured and then DJ Foster stepped in and had some huge plays just as he did receiving Rico Gathers did all right to Jay Sharp his first game back three receptions 69 yards and that touchdown and then a little bit from all the others but not much defensively we were on them today four tackles for a loss for Pierre Lewis two for Davis one for Smith Wright Melvin and Jordan and sacks we had plenty of those as well two for Dion Jordan one for Michael Bennett one for Trey Flowers and one for the ever amazing Kevin Pierre Lewis and Dion Jordan of course on one of those sacks also forced a fumble a great team play a 52 yard field goal to win the game how many field goals have we missed how many extra points have we missed this season? And we get the 52 yarder, the kicker ice to finish the game, win the game and finish eight and eight on the season, top of the NFC South. So, so let's take a look at these weekly goals that we got all of, 100% beat your rival. Yep, gain 250 yards, get two plus interceptions. We got two plus interceptions. What the heck is an interception? We didn't even get any interceptions, so it's not that. None of Thomas Morstead's punts this game were outside of the 20. We were sky kicking them on purpose to drop them inside the 20. And his kick accuracy goes down to because of it. So let's take a look at the injuries. This is what we don't want to see because it says two new injuries. These are going to be longer term injuries for Keith Marshall and Nate Ebner, who at the start of the game got injured very early on. Keith Marshall out for four weeks, which obviously at this point doesn't matter. And Nate Ebner out for six. That's not great news. A shoulder tear for him, a dislocated elbow for Nate Ebner. So right now it's saying the Atlanta Falcons are first. And there we go, although it said it the other way around, had me worried for a second that the game had messed it up. It hasn't. We're in the playoffs, the wild card round. We're playing, we're playing the Arizona Cardinals at home. The interesting thing here will be whether or not Carson Palmer has returned for the Cardinals. Of course, the big thing for us is that Keith Marshall is injured. So taking a look at the injury report here for the Cardinals, Jermaine Gresham and David Johnson only ones there on that list which means Carson Palmer will be back which means it will be a very tough game we beat them the last time but I don't think that's any other reason than the fact that they were starting another quarterback so last time they were starting Jeff Driscoll now I don't know if that means Drew Stanton was injured as well but I think we got very lucky with the matchup there we had a 67 rated quarterback instead of a 91 rated quarterback and sure David Johnson's injured but Andre Ellington's not bad they've still got Chris Johnson Plenty of things to use against us, and they've got this whole flock of wide receivers. We get no mentions in Offensive Player of the Year or Defensive Player of the Year, but the big one, Offensive Rookie of the Year, which to be fair, I think we have a couple of guys that could have had it, and it was stolen by Ezekiel Elliott. Keith Marshall definitely deserved it. Christian Hackenberg probably also deserved it. DJ Foster probably also deserved it. And Tajay Sharp, surprised it was him there. Malcolm Mitchell, I think, probably played better, but... So let's take a look at player stats to see how everybody did. You may notice I sound a little bit different. That's because I wanted to do this in post. I didn't do this originally, thought it might be a good idea. So Christian Hackenberg, he did break that touchdown record and he did break it by three touchdowns. 
But we look at the rest of his ratings and it's pretty realistic. So his rating of 90.1 isn't as good as Robert Griffin III's rookie record of 102.4. Most pass attempts, he doesn't even come close to Andrew Luck's 627. Most pass completions, also not very close to Sam Bradford's 354, 308. Highest completion percentage is held by Ben Roethlisberger who was 66.4, we're at 64%, so quite close there but again, not that close. And the most passing yards is also held by Andrew Luck who passed for an insane number as a rookie of 4,374 yards. We're at quite close there, we were 3,900 but not that close at all, that's a couple of games away from Andrew Luck. And his yards per attempt. 9.41 held by Greg Cook from 1969 and we're at 8.2. So although we beat the rookie record of 26 touchdowns in a season held by Peyton Manning and Russell Wilson, we beat that by three, but all the others we were under the normal record. So it's not like we insanely beat everything, we just threw more touchdowns because, because everybody else on the offense was pretty much a rookie as well. There was no choice but someone to break some record if we were going to make the playoffs. Rushing Keith Marshall broke 1,000 for 1,373. DJ Foster got a 246 and Janovich put another 51 on top. 13 touchdowns for Marshall as well, which is pretty good. Yards after contact, 286. That's a pretty high number, especially for a guy that's a lot about speed. Receiving, nobody got 1,000 yards, but DJ Foster was closest with 924 on 73 receptions. Coleman, 56, 886. Then Mitchell, then TJ Sharp, who ended up with more yards than Mitchell actually there. Same number of touchdowns. And just compare the numbers here from Sudfeld and Rico Gathers. Now we started Gathers about five weeks left in the season. He's outgained him by 20 odd yards. The average per reception is what's really big and only has one touchdown less. Definitely a good choice to switch to Gathers there. Michael Thomas had a couple of weeks worth of plays whilst TJ Sharp was out and then not much more down here at the bottom. Now we look at the tackles. Now this is one I always like. Kevin Pierre-Lewis 121 tackles on the season. Akeem Davis 109, Nate Ebner 109, which kind of shows you the problem there. Your safety shouldn't be tied for second leading tacklers on the team and by a whole bunch over your middle linebacker. But Kevin Piello has absolutely ran the show this year. I'm pretty sure we can select team captains. If we can, he's being the captain, no doubt. I don't know who else will be selected for captain, but we'll think about that when it comes up. We've still got the playoffs left yet. 12 tackles for loss from as well. Trey Flowers led in that department with 16. Nate Ebner with 14. That's a strong safety coming down and making plays. Keem Davis with 10. Scooby Wright with 10. Dion Jordan with 8. Now for the sacks. For the sacks, nobody broke 10, which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping somebody would, but Trey Flowers with nine. Kevin Pierre-Lewis, second on the team with eight and a half sacks, a 4-3 outside linebacker. Dion Jordan, seven and a half. Devin Still, four and a half. Michael Bennett, four. So that's a pretty decent defensive line there. Pretty good output. Dejun Smith and Rashan Melvin sharing time as that slot corner and coming in on the blitz with four between them. Kyla Fackrell not really playing that much, only 27 tackles, one and a half sacks. Interceptions, nobody really did anything great. Dejun Smith got three, Melvin got three. Pierre Lewis of course got one as well because he's going to be here all the time in every category. Hakeem Davis got one and Dexter McDougall got one as well. You don't notice we haven't seen D Milliner but that's I'm happy with that. If D Milliner continues to shut the side of the field down doesn't even have any interceptions but never really was a problem for us. I'm happy with that. Forced fumbles, Akeem Davis 4, Nate Ebner 4, Trey Flowers 3, Dion Jordan 3, Dejun Smith got one as well and Kyla Fackrell got one as well. That means Kevin Pierre-Lewis didn't actually get one so there's a category he's not in. And um, one safety for Akeem Davis and Dion Jordan with the one touchdown that we got all year. That is it for this week. We are in the playoffs. I upped the difficulty. I tried to keep this team in check, but they there's just no stopping them. This is a team of guys who up until this season were either career backups, fringe players, obviously rookies, but that weren't ever going to start. We took them, we gave them an opportunity, and they made the most of it. They've got to the playoffs. You're not going to have to wait until next Friday for the playoffs. That will happen this Wednesday. However far we end up going, if we even make it out of the wildcard round, that'll all be in one episode. <laughs>